spell the zine? No, kidding. We have, you'll <laughs> laugh, you'll cry, you'll poop your pants. It's Johnny M! Yeah. Hey guys, uh, the most awkward thing uh, is to take the mic off the mic stand. Uh, Comedy 101, Stevie Wonder's great, and I just mastered it. <laughs> Uh, my name's John, I'm from Massachusetts, uh, and I'm always finding myself defending my citizenship because I don't have the typical accent made so famous by Leonardo DiCaprio in The Departed. I mean, <laughs> I only spent 18 years of my life growing up working landscaping making 425, then this jerk spent six weeks in Boston for the summer, gets millions of dollars, and he comes off more authentic Bostonian than me. <laughs> Douche. <laughs> when I first moved out here to LA, I went on my first interview for a camp coordinator position, and uh, it was a group interview, and we got around to introducing ourselves, and, and I said, yeah, my name's John from Boston, and then uh, the interviewer, what a piece of work. He cut me off and he, and he started to question me and he said, well, you're not from Boston, you don't have the accent. Then he looked at some other kid to try to make himself feel cool. He's like, were you late because you parked a car in Harvard Yard? <laughs> well, sir, I am late. I did park my car in your yard because I fucked your wife not once but four times. <laughs> So the next interview I had, I decided to do something completely different. I went all Boston gear. I had a replica Red Sox championship ring. I had a Bruins watch. I had a zip-up Celtics jacket. I had Adidas with the, with the Patriots logo on it. And the interviewer was from Massachusetts as well. And she's like, yeah, you know, people used to give me a hard time because since that movie came out, uh, The Departed, not everyone talks like that. I said, Thank you, you're a godsend. Uh, so I've been living in LA for three years now and I'm kind of used to seeing celebrities, more so because I work with them. Uh, I worked on a small show you may have heard of called The Voice. And yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, everyone's like, what are the coaches like? I'm like, well, they're just like us at the end of the day. I mean, Blake, He's from Oklahoma, he's a blue collar dude. I'm from Mass, I'm, I consider myself a blue collar guy. We both wear blue jeans. Uh, <laughs> but the greatest thing ever was in between takes on set, I looked over and I see Adam Levine drinking the same bottle of water as I do. And after all, folks, he was voted the sexiest man of the year, so by default, I'm sexy. <laughs> but in Every day life I still see them and it doesn't bother me. Like the other day I was in uh, Rite Aid on Hollywood Boulevard and in line in front of me in the pharmacy was uh, Marilyn Monroe getting her pills. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I left I turned to the right and I see Chewbacca and Darth Vader smoking a joint. I mean, only in LA can, uh, can we bring two enemies together. <laughs> Speaking of organics, I shop at Trader Joe's. <laughs> and every time I go into that store, I'll be damned. It's like I'm walking into a war zone. Just on the walk up, I have to give myself a pep talk. Like, all right, John, make sure your shoes are tight, tight, extra tight today. You got your list. Keep your head on a swivel. Just stick to the list. Just get what you need. And damn it, stay away from the sample counter. You always mess yourself up when you go over there. <laughs> Whew, take a deep breath. Doors open. And wham. As soon as I step in, I'm looking for a, a clear path just so the bananas, just to avoid all these shopping carts. And it's like 10 feet away, but there's all this madness in front of me, and I finally get there, then out of nowhere I hear Sergeant Sarah, fresh from yoga, barking orders to her kale army. Alright bitches, listen up, we have two bags of kale here, form your line tighter, no one's allowed them back to be for now, uh, push them down to the spinach, let them eat the edamame or the arugula, no one gets our kale. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> Sarah needs to pump the brakes, you know, there's enough organics in the back to pull out of here. Uh, and since I'm such a fan of crazy, I think I'm the only one that enjoys riding the LA Metro. Uh, I mean, all in a one-way trip, it can be exciting, scary, and humbling. I mean, the exciting part is, you never know what mood the bus driver is, is having that day. I mean, they just may go off 
off route, park at bus at their house in Inglewood and just say, well, that's my day. I had a tough week. Just head north, you'll find your way. I was like, great, it's like a scavenger hunt. I've never seen Inglewood before. <laughs> and the scary part is uh, sometimes I'm, I see a middle-aged Latino woman just reciting a, a Catholic sermon in Spanish to some drunk guy. I mean, it's scary because she's using the same spring water that I makes me sexy to rid the bus of evildoers. <laughs> And the humbling part is, just on my way here to the show, I uh, rode the bus with Charlie Chaplin, and such a great legend, and he still had to pay his dollar fifty, and the damn driver wouldn't even put the ramp down. I mean, he's got bad hips. <laughs> <laughs> so you're only good till your next gig. Um, that's my time. Yeah.